Welcome to Electron Online, and here's an application of the BONs of R law. In the previous video, we showed you where that equation came from. It all came down to trying to figure out how a small current element, a small dl, where current I move, goes through, and how that affects the magnetic field at some distance away. And so there's the equation, mu sub naught I divided by 4 pi times the quantity dl cross R, the unit vector in the direction. So this would be the unit vector right here. So here's our unit vector dr. Oop, I shouldn't call it dr, it's our unit vector r. There, that's better. So that's this vector right here. And then we have, of course, a small dl in this direction. And so you can see that dl in this direction and r in this direction. Let me, uh, I think I have a better way of showing you how to do that. So my dl is like this, my r is like this. And notice that those two are always at 90 degrees. And we're trying to find what the magnetic field is caused by a current loop. We're going to ignore this portion right here, the current coming in, going around the loop, coming back out. We'll ignore this part, that's not significant. Simply, what is the contribution of this ring like here that's full of char uh, current? Notice that the current is flowing in this direction, counterclockwise. And so you can see that you're going to take this element right here, find the magnetic field caused by that element, and then just simply integrate around the entire circle. So here's a good example of how to use the BON Savar law. Also notice that if we take the small current element right here and we want to know what the magnetic field right here is, notice we're looking for the magnetic field on the axis that runs through the center of the circle. Off axis would be a lot more difficult, but the axis makes it fairly, uh, very easy to figure out. Notice that the direction of the magnetic field caused by that small element will be perpendicular to this vector right here. Notice that as you, as you draw a circle all the way around this particular element, if you go straight across like that, the B field would be straight up, but at an angle downward like that, the B field is angled. DB is like this. This angle right here is the same as this angle right there, or this angle here is the same as this angle right there. And really what we want to do is we want to find the DB in the X direction, in the direction outward like this, because the DB in the Y direction, eventually when you add them all up for a com complete circle, as you go around the circle, Notice that this will continue to turn all the way around. So this dB in the y direction will go all the way around like this. And notice that for everyone sticking up this way, there'll be one going this way. For this one over here, there'll be another one on the other side. So when you add up all the dB in the y direction, they simply will cancel each other out. We simply want to just add up the dB in the x direction only, which means we have to find the expression for dB in the x direction. So dB in the x direction equals dB times of course, it's the adjacent side to this angle, so it would be times the cosine of phi. Now, the cosine of phi can be expressed in terms of its physical dimensions. Notice, let's say that we are a distance x away from the center of the circle. Let's say that the circle has a radius a, and let's say that this distance from there to there is simply r, the magnitude of the position vector to that location from this little current element. So we know that the cosine of phi, by definition, is going to be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So here's the angle. The adjacent side would be A, and the hypotenuse would be R. So this would be equal to adjacent side divided by R. Remember, oop, and I should write it as a small r, because that's what I did over there. And notice that small r is simply going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus a squared. In this case, both x and a are constants. This is a fixed point on the axis, and a is simply the radius of the circle. All right, that means we can write this as db times the ratio of a over r. And when we then write it in here, we can then say that db is equal to db, db in the x direction is equal to db times that, or is equal to mu sub naught i dl cross r divided by 4 pi. And in the denominator, we're going to get r cubed. And in the denominator, we have an a for the radius of the circle. And then finally, when we do the cross product of dl cross r, this is a unit vector, and dl is a small little line segment. We do a cross product is the magnitude of dl times the magnitude of the unit vector, which is 1 times the sine of the angle between them. But since it's always 90 degrees, the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So we can simply write this as db in the x direction is equal to mu sub naught i, I'll put the a in front right here, times dl. 
r is 1 and the sine of 90 degrees is 1 divided by 4 pi r cubed and let me write r cubed r cubed is going to be equal to the quantity a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power all right now notice we could have left it at r cubed but it tells us a little bit more when we write as a squared plus x squared now we just have the the um, contribution of a smaller line segment now we want to go all the way around like this so one more modification notice that we can express dl in terms of realizing that if this is the radius and dl is like that this is a small angle let's call it d what do i have i haven't used any other angle so let me use d theta right so we'll call theta the angle going all the way around the circle and uh, so we can say that this is the arc length ds or dl dl is basically a times d theta so we can write db in the x direction as mu sub naught i a and instead of dl which is a small little segment on the edge of the circle we can write that as the radius so we have a times a times the sine of theta oh i shouldn't write the sine of theta i should just write as d theta right so it's a d theta which is the same as dl divided by 4 pi times a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power. All right, so that's just the contribution of one little segment. How about if I now want the entire circle contribution? So therefore, we know that b in the x direction is equal to the integral of all the dbs, which is equal to, let's take all the constants out. So we have mu sub naught i a squared divided by 4 pi, all these are constants, a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power times the integral of d theta going from 0 all the way to 2 pi, all the way around the circle. All right, so that's easy. The integral of d theta going from 0 to 2 pi is simply 2 pi. So this is going to be equal to mu sub naught times i times a squared times 2 pi divided by 4 pi times a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power. And finally, if we want to simplify that, notice that the pi's cancel out. This 2 becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. So finally, we can say that the B field in the x direction is simply equal to mu sub naught times i times a squared divided by 2 times the quantity a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power. And that's the answer. That is the B field, the magnetic field, at some point along the axis, a distance x away from the center of the circle, due to a current running through the circular conductor like that. Now, just as a check, what if we bring this point all the way in over here, we let x equal 0? What would be the answer when x becomes 0? So we let x equal 0, and then what will the answer become? That would be the magnetic field at the very center of the circle. So when x becomes 0, notice, then we end up with, this would be equal to mu sub naught i a squared divided by 2 times x is 0. We have a squared to the 3 halves power, which means 2a to the third power. And then you can see that the a's cancel out. So finally, this becomes equal to mu sub naught i divided by 2a. And that would be the magnetic field at the very center of the circle, right here at this middle point right there. And that's another interesting equation to know, because later on when we do solenoids or coils, and we bunch them all together, we have n number of loops on there, we want to know what the magnetic field is at the center. This will definitely help us figure out how to do that. But now you see a nice application of the beyond savar law. We want to find out the magnetic field here at, on the axis, away from a circular loop of current. That's how we do that.